evening. My name is Rose Taylor and I will be your moderator for this class. Welcome to another lecture given by members of the Chicago Northside Zoom class. This is a school and not a church. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh or Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity until this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The Dean of the Chicago North Side is Dr. John Quates, and the president is Dr. Patrick Latortu. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word of Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word of Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifests in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and his Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud had no particular or descriptive shape and form. And we have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him and his pure spirit state took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being, that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua, the Messiah, whom the world called Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also, at this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses a
to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The objectives and aims of the Chicago Northside Zoom class are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and as he actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Or to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating a mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is to speak the truth. Today's class will be dedicated in prayer by Dr. Jada Daniels. Our scripture lesson for this evening is Joel, the second chapter, which will be read by Dr. Amir Coleman. May we now have our prayer. Good evening, class. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. And I just um, want to give Yashua all uh, thanks for allowing each and every one of us to. Um, Get yet another day to learn of him and of his gospel. And I pray that anyone who may be listening, um, that Yahshua does reveal um, his true gospel right within their heart and mind. And this is what we always pray for when we are speaking to anyone about the gospel. And in Yahshua's name, I pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening. I will be reading out of the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments. Critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by A.B. Train of the Scripture Research Association Incorporated, reprinted by Yahshua Promotions. Joel, the second chapter. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Yahweh cometh for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth, devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them 
is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen so shall they run, like the noise of chariots on the tops of the mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame, a fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face the people shall be in anguish, all faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall march every one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one press another. They shall walk every one in his path. And though they march between weapons, they will not charge their course, change their course. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And Yahweh shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of Yahweh is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Therefore also now, saith Yahweh, Turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto Yahweh your Elohim. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and it grieveth him of the evil. Who knoweth? If he will return and relent and leave a blessing behind him, that ye may offer a meal offering and a drink offering unto Yahweh your Elohim. Blow the trumpet at Zion, sanctify a fast, call a Solomon, Solomon assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priest, the ministers of Yahweh, weep between the porch and the altar. And let them say, spare thy people, O Yahweh, and give not thy heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their Elohim? Then will Yahweh be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, Yahweh will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil and ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a re reproach among the heathen. But I will remove far off from you the northern army, and will drive him into a land barren and desolate, with his face toward the east, east sea, and his hinder part toward the uttermost sea, and his stink shall come up, and his ill savor shall come up, because he hath done great things. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for Yahweh will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beast of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in Yahweh your Elohim, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, 
and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, worm and the can caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of Yahweh your Lord that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am Yahweh, your Lord, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old man shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of Yahweh come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of Yahweh shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as Yahweh hath said, and in the remnant whom Yahweh shall call. That was Joel, the second chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Jada Daniels and Dr. Amir Coleman. Um, before we call our first speaker this evening, we do have an, a few announcements. Please be sure to mute your microphone in the video if you are not speaking. Tonight, we'll have a two-speaker format. We also would like to acknowledge visitors, Dr. Amir and Mariah Coleman from Lansing, Michigan, and Dr. B. Gordon. Also, um, we'd like to announce that each speaker will receive a five minute sign alerting them that their lecture is coming to a close. Please acknowledge this sign. Our first speaker this evening is Dr. Kenyatta Jackson. Dr. Jackson. Hello, uh, good evening class. Good evening. Um, I'm happy to be here tonight. Um, I just wanna give Yahweh Elohim all the praise, all the honor and the glory. And um, not gonna be up here long because I have some loud noise in the background and I don't want it to be going all out on Zoom, but I'm just thankful to uh, Yahweh for uh, choosing me, allowing me to learn something about his purpose, pattern, and plan. And um, I just want to, um, I'm thankful to him that he brought me down to this class to let me learn something about him, how he really is and actually exists. And uh, that's our first aim of the school. And I can say that since I've been coming to this class, he have show me about his himself um and also i'm just thankful for him for um when you ask of something of yahweh through yahshua if it's according to his will he will give it to you and um i did ask him to let me read more and um he has done that and i'm grateful to him for that um and I just, I was reading a paper on, I'll just uh, mention this paper and uh, meditation, prayer, the book of life, immortality by Dr. Kinley um, was written in 1974. And um, as I was reading this paper, I just, 
all I saw, I'm thankful to him that I finished it, but all I saw was just Yahweh's love and beauty, you know, just for allowing me to understand what he was saying in this transcript. And um, I'm just thankful to him for that. And I just want to keep admonishing and encouraging the brother and to keep coming to class. And even when all those trials and tribulations, you know, get put up on us to stand in Yahshua and keep the faith in him, stand in the holy place, and just, just know for sure that he will deliver you. Just keep that faith with confidence because we have to have it. You know, he fights our battles for us and there's nothing we can do but give it to him because he put us in it anyway. So uh, with that, I'll just say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Jackson. Uh, I'll, I'll be the second speaker tonight if Yahweh is willing to share something through me. And we also would like to thank Brother Clifford Cardoza for volunteering to read. If anyone is led to join him, please do so. I'm grateful to Yahshua for giving me another opportunity to come to class. Um, I may not be up here long because I'm not feeling all that well, but I do want to just say um, I'm grateful to Yahshua to have anything to share it, 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 if he chooses to use me as a vessel because we know that it's the Holy Spirit that speaks through men and that we of ourselves are insufficient to know or say anything uh, of our own that, you know, we have been taught and Yahshua and the Messiah is the teacher and that he is the Holy Spirit, see. And so, um, as said by the first vessel, you know, um, we have to have faith in Yahshua the Messiah. And coming down here, we learn about who our creator really is and how he operates, um, that we can develop some faith in him by, it says faith coming by here. And maybe we can get like uh, Romans 10, 17 and, um, you know, uh, as uh, you know, I was, had reviewed that he, you know, was sharing, look, faith don't come by works. Faith come by hearing and that by the word of Yahweh that you have to come down to one of these schools that's preaching the true gospel, see, according to the law and the prophets and let Yahweh Elohim, Yahshua reveal something onto you about who he is and how he's operating. Now, he has to give the increase, um, but, you know, our job, as Dr. Kenley has said, he set up these schools that, you know, he's raising up able-bodied ministers to preach the gospel so that mankind's soul can be saved. Uh, and if faith coming by hearing, not by any works. So if we can get that. This is Romans. Romans. This is Romans 10, 17. Um, so then faith cometh by hearing the word of Yahweh. Okay. Can you get the 16th verse also? Uh, just to give just a little bit of train of thought. Okay. Romans 10, 16. <laughs> but they have not all obeyed the evangel. For Isaiah mm -hmm. saith, Yahweh who have believed our report. So then faith cometh by hearing the word of Yahweh. So faith cometh by hearing. And he says, who have believed the report? Now we're down here and through the great witnesses that Yahshua and the Messiah say, he proves, see, look, you look, we don't have an excuse not to believe that our creator is who he say he is and how he operates. Um, we learned down here in this school that our creator his true name. His name is Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua, that he is a pattern and that he patterned all things after himself, that he has a purpose, he has a pattern and a plan, and that the Messiah who the world erroneously called Jesus Christ, came down, manifested himself in the flesh, fulfilled the law and 
prophets moved that out of the way and ushered all of mankind into a new age and a new dispensation whereby, see, we can be saved by grace through faith in Yahshua the Messiah and not of works. And that he created this entire stellar universe. See, he, Yahweh Elohim, created this entire stellar universe see, to show mankind, look, I am the Alpha, I am the Omega. See, all things are according to how I have foreknown and predestined and purposed this. And he came down to deliver mankind. See, he himself, Yahweh Elohim, manifested, came down through the precious blood of Yahshua the Messiah after he was crucified, delivered mankind's soul by believing in the true gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. And so we learned down here in the school that our creator is spirit. So in John 4, 24, it says Yahweh is spirit. I didn't have a clue, none whatsoever about my creator before I came down to one of these schools that spirit is the source and substance, the limits and bounds, of everything and that Yahweh Elohim see he showed himself to Moses Aaron Nadab and Abihu and 70 elders atop of Mount Sinai after he delivered them out of the land of Egypt so I'd like to go back and get Exodus uh, 24 9 and 10 and then I'd like to get the tabernacle pattern scriptures which is Exodus 25 8 and 9 and 40, and then First Chronicles 28, 19, and Hebrews 85. So Yahweh is spirit, see? And so when Moses was called, Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, around the mount, Yahweh Elohim said, Moses alone, see, will come up to the mount. But see, Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, rose up with him. And when Moses went atop of of the mount, he saw Yahweh Elohim in a vision. Now we learn down here in, in this school that our creator is spirit. See, he is a threefold unity. He is the father, which is depicted as this orange fiery colored cloud atop Mount Sinai. Yahweh, our creator, is not a cloud. He is symbolized, as said by the moderator, as a cloud because it has no particular or descriptive shape and form. See, and it and Yahweh Elohim, see, spirit being um, all that there is, see, he has nine primary divine attributes. He's not limited to that. Yahweh is way more than that. But those nine primary divine attributes of intelligence, wisdom, and knowledge, beauty, love, justice, foundation, power, and strength. See, Yahweh Elohim came down into a set position as Elohim. Now, this is Yahweh the Father moving in part, same one not another, see, and to the super incorporeal shape and form of a man known as Elohim, the divine pluralistic title he chose for himself. Now, in this state, Yahweh Elohim is the archetype or the original pattern of the universe in that he transformed it to an intangible pattern, showed it to Moses in the mount that is a definition of himself that he told Moses, you make this pattern once you go back down, just like you saw it in the mount. But he is the word or son. Or see, that is Yahweh, the father moved into shape and form as Elohim. Yahweh Elohim in his self-same spirit manifested himself in the flesh as Yahshua the Messiah proven that he's a threefold unity. So let's get Exodus uh, 25, uh, eight and nine. And then uh, before we get the tabernacle pattern scriptures, I just like to maybe get John one and one through the third verse, verse and 14. John one and one. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. All things are made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. 14. 
And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thank you. So it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. See, now he's proven I'm not separate. I'm not a trinity. There's not Lord one, God another, separate personality, and Jesus Christ a third. No. He said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. See, self-same one, moving in part. From his pure spirit or abstract state into one is in shape and form. And then it said, and the word was made flesh as Yahshua the Messiah, proving he is a threefold unity. And it says in Deuteronomy 6 and 4, hear, O Israel, Yahweh, our Elohim, is Yahweh a unity. And he also talks about that in Zechariah, I believe, 14 and 9, that in that day, Yahweh shall be and is one or a unity. And the reason why we're going back to the law and the prophets because we're admonished to go back to the law and the prophets. I said, uh, John said it in John 5, 39, search scripture, Joshua the Messiah. He's telling them, you think you have eternal life, but they are they that testify of me. And so it's, we are also admonished to go back in Isaiah 8 and 20 to the law and the testimony. So we have to go back to the law and the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, the word is Yahweh Elohim. See, he's the one, Yahweh Elohim, that appeared to the patriots and the prophets down through the ages and dispensations when it says, and the word came to Isaiah and the word came to, you know, uh, Obadiah and the word came to the different prophets. We're talking about Yahweh Elohim, see, the creator himself. He's the one that instructed men, write this and go here and do that and preach that. That is the word or son, Yahweh Elohim. He's the self same one also that gave our founder, Dr. Henry Kipper Kenley, a divine vision and a divine revelation see and when he showed him that vision and then he had that conversation with the creator he said look what will you do what i have shown you he said look teach your people your will he didn't say teach my people he said, teach your people, see, because we're down here endeavoring to learn of Yahweh, to get an understanding, be filled with the Holy Spirit, and become the people of Yahweh and not ourselves any longer. Is that insufficient? So our creator is a unity, not a trinity, as taught what we learned in the world. Um, and maybe we can get First John 5 and 7 before we get the tabernacle pattern scriptures. See, he, Yahweh Elohim, proving his own existence. He don't need mankind to try to prove anything for him. He made both the angelic and the physical creation, and he patterned them after himself. See, so he looked, ain't nothing going to deviate or die digress he is the father of the word and the holy spirit he's threefold all things are going to be threefold testifying to the father the word the holy spirit see he has structure he has function he said look you make that pattern Moses just like this because it's a definition or an example of spiritual or heavenly things and all things that are operating according to the pattern because he is the pattern so let's get to our first John 5 and 7. First John 5 and 7 out of the King James Version. Uh, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Okay. Next verse, please. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three... <clears throat> agree in one okay thank you so it says the father the word and the holy spirit these three are one and then the spirit and the water and the blood these three agree on one and it was said beautifully by the other speaker the other night you got blood water and spirit in your body now any one of those things start going uh, south <laughs> or south 
we have a problem. But the blood, the water, and the spirit, these three are agreeing in one because it's testifying to the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. So Yahweh Elohim has said in Romans 119 and 20, see, he said, look, because that which may be known of Yahweh, we can know something about our creator. He has not gone off and left his creation just, um, just down here floundering. We know it's chaos all in the world. It's chaos inside of man's world, their heart and mind. But we have a hope of salvation in Yahshua the Messiah. He hasn't left us. And so when he said, look, Romans 1, 19 and 20, because that which may be known of Yahweh, there is something we may know about him. See, uh, that which may be known of Yahweh is clearly seen being understood by the things that are made. So he made this entire creation going to testify to himself he's not leaving us without an excuse he said because they are without excuse and we are without excuse see we just couldn't say what we didn't know now these types these shadows these allegories and the natural are pointing to spiritual principles there is natural life that points to spiritual life there's natural eating points to spiritual eating so all these principles there's a natural body that points to a spiritual body there's natural light that points to spiritual light or illumination there's natural death that points to a spiritual death so he said look it takes the natural because look our senses is finite there's no way we can understand and know anything about spirit without him the father giving us the natural to point to a spiritual principle whereby he can cause us to understand these things so going back to moses he told moses he he delivered the children of israel out of egypt by mighty hand see um well maybe uh, we should get exodus 20 12th chapter where he um delivered the children 12 and 1 he told Moses to, uh, in there and take look take out a lamb so we come down here we learned that you know there is an exodus before there's a genesis well what does that mean didn't know I didn't know that he had to deliver them out of Egypt and then after they came out of Egypt he called Moses up and showed him a divine vision in Revelation. And he instructed Moses. And he said, look, you write this down. And see, Moses, see, by vision, see, they have Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, see, the law and the prophets. That came after, after the children of Israel were delivered out of Egypt. And so before they were delivered, you got to come out by the blood of the Lamb, see, that's a principle. That's a Romans 1, 19 and 20. The principle is, look, we have a meal we have to eat before we leave Egypt, before we leave darkness, before we leave Misaram. In the self-same way that the children of Israel left Egypt, see, they ate the Passover meal, roasted lamb, unleavened bread, bitter herbs, and that is the same way we're leaving Egypt spiritually and psychologically, not going to get something to eat or a meal from the store. Eating a physical lamb is not going to change our heart and mind, but there is a principle involved with, with the, with the uh, understanding that Yahweh say, look, when you come down here and you sit down in these classes, some stuff have to go, see, which is our thoughts our theories, our opinions, what we think we know about God, what we think we know about. Some folks didn't even go to church. I didn't, I wasn't a church goer. I, you know, it was sporadic on holidays, and, but I mostly was raised by whatever, you know, uh, people of the world, various philosophies, opinions, you know, those kinds of things, the church of myself, as, as Dr. Rick Trevis and he say, look, I went to the church of myself. It's what I thought, what I believe. That stuff has to go and we have to eat a meal and see, and that's the true report or the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah and believe the report. And then Yahweh Elohim would begin to push us out of Egypt, 
see, on a migration. So we're going to get the lamb. He told them to eat. Now, now keep in mind, just want to also say that Moses, he, he was in the wilderness and he had a vision of Yahweh Elohim. He said, look, this is my name, Yahweh Elohim. Um, he was the Elohim of their fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, Elohim of Isaac and Jacob. He said, this is my name forever. And Moses, you got a job to do. You got to go back down and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. You see, Moses didn't want to go, but he gave him some witnesses. See, nope, you're going. And I'm going to send your brother out there to meet you on the way. But you're going down because Moses had killed a man and he was afraid to go back. See, so that was when he revealed a true name to him. Before that, the true name of the creator was not known. And it's important that we know his name. His name is Yahweh. Elohim Yahshua, see, not Lord, God, and Jesus Christ. That's another thing that we learn coming down to one of these schools. He said, look, he ain't going to let you go. But after I deliver... Uh, 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 some uh, plagues and play Egypt. So after a while, he will let you go. And so he said, look, he's going to come through at midnight after this final last plague that he poured out on him. He's going to come through at midnight. Smite firstborn man and beast. Did not have the blood of the lamb on the inside of their door. He had to eat this meal, but eat it in haste because see, I'm coming through. And if I don't see the blood, firstborn man and beast going to be dead. So let's get Exodus 12 chapter. Exodus 12 and 1. Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. <clears throat> Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their father, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of souls. Every man according to the eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without spot or blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and you should keep it until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it, and they shall eat the flesh in that night. Roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Okay, so thank you. So they had to take on his lamb, male of the first year. See, he said, look, this is going to be the first year to you. Yahweh Elohim gave them the first year. See, they had to take out a lamb. The lamb was prefiguring and typifying Yahshua the Messiah. He had to have, uh, the lamb had to be without uh, blemish. Now we learn down here that lamb typified Yahshua because he had to be a lamb first year, no blemish, no sin. Pontius Pilate told him, I find no guile in you. Unleavened bread, bitter herbs. And so the death angel came through, see, Egypt, see, he smite firstborn man and beast that did not have a blood on the inside, see, representing having the Messiah wear in them. See, they, he said, look, keep your feet, your shoes, staff in your hand, have your feet uh, with your shoes on, be ready to go. So Moses leading the children of Israel, not Moses, truly Yahweh. He's a type of shadow. He's not the reality. And so they're being led by a cloud. They get out here to the Red Sea. They're, they're crying. They say, look, the Egyptians are pursuing. What do we do? Moses, you shouldn't have brought us out here. We should stay in Egypt. We told you to leave us alone. But see, Moses cried unto Yahweh. He told Moses to raise the rod. And see, the Red Sea rose up in a heap, and it went through on dry ground. See, that cloud led the way. It was a pillar of fire by now and the cloud by day. So they're leaving Egypt by principles of blood, water, and spirit. And then they're coming out here into the wilderness of Sinai after eating a meal. Now the Egyptians 
tried to pursue them, and Yahweh Elohim just looked. He closed the door on them. The river, the Red Sea just came down, see, and they all died, see. Now, that's a principle because they follow in the flesh, see. The Israelites were following the cloud. They were following the spirit, see, being led by Yahweh. And so when they got out here around the mountain, Yahweh Elohim, he said, look, tell the children to wash up, clean up, see, gather around the mount. He was going to speak his law down to him, to them. He spoke down the Ten Commandment law, see, look, don't do this, thou shalt not kill. First, don't have no other Elohim before me. And that's the principle. Now, we're not doing natural, physical things anymore. It's all in the spirit now. But the point remains the same. Don't put no other Elohim before me. Now, just because Yahshua the Messiah fulfilled that, that don't mean we can go out and get an Elohim and have an idol before Yahweh Elohim. That doesn't, that's an abomination unto Yahweh. You should worship and show me and me alone, see. No idols before me. So he said, look, Moses, come up to the mount and be there. So let's get Exodus uh, 25, 89, where he says he's going to um, build this tabernacle pattern because it's um, vitally important that we bring out how this pattern is an uh, explanation or uh, example of our creator that he fashioned all things according to. Exodus 25, 8. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. According to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it. Okay. And then 40th verse. Exodus 25, 40. And look that thou make them after their pattern, which we show thee in the mount. Okay, so he said, look, make it after the pattern, serve to the in the mount, and then let's get First Chronicles 28, 19, and then Hebrews 8 and 5, because we're going back to the law, back to the prophets. See, this thing is carried throughout the Bible to show how important it is. See, because it's a definition or an explanation of our creator whose spirit, it has structure, it has function. Even we, right now, according to the pattern, the pattern has principles of a death, a burial, a resurrection, and ascension. Why? Because it's important to the death, the burial, the resurrection, ascension of who? Yahshua the Messiah. Right now, we're in a burial. We're in a winter season. We just left a fall. So we had fall, then we're in winter, we know after winter, there's a spring and then a summer. So there's a death, a burial, a resurrection, an ascension. See, there's blood, water, spirit, 40, that four principle there at the door, or like into the Red Sea. The fifth principle, uh, the fifth step would be likened into the wilderness of Sinai, according to the pattern be likened to the holy place. The sixth step would be likened to the second veil or the river Jordan. And the seventh step would be likened to Canaan's land um, or the most holy place. And see, I, I don't want to forget, see the children of Israel, the whole migration before they got down in Egypt, Yahweh had promised Abraham that he would bless his seed as the stars of heaven and the sand of the sea and give them a land flowing with milk and honey. But first, they had to go down. So you have a principle of going down, the seed of Abraham, the seed multiplying in Egypt, coming out by a mighty hand. There's going to be a new birth in the wilderness of Sinai, I see. And then after some 40 years, they're going to also go through the divided waters of the River Jordan and go into Canaan's land and receive their physical inheritance. And that's just a type and shadow of perfection or a type and shadow of this new creature, see, that would be born in the wilderness, type and shadow, see, we're going to receive that knowledge and understanding of Yahweh Elohim, have the cloud 
fill our hearts, similar to the cloud filling the tabernacle, receiving the gift, see, of the Holy Spirit, becoming a new creature in Yahshua, and that veil being rent, see, like that second veil between the most holy place and the holy place was rent, whereby you can see now your creator sitting on your throne in the self same way. That veil, the river Jordan, see, it rent. And they went on into Canaan's land and built Solomon's temple, constructed as a man sitting on the throne. See, and those gold vessels were placed into the uh, Solomon's temple. See, now we're vessels too. And it's a scripture that talked about, you know, a man's soul being tried um, by fire. See, we're going through something. We're being converted. We're being changed. We're on a migration. We're on a journey, not to physical Jerusalem, but spiritually and psychologically, we have to be changed. We have to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The flesh has got to be rent in our heart and mind. And we have to become a part of Yahshua's Messiah's body to escape, see, the destruction that's, uh, that's come. And it's on mankind's heels. We don't need nobody to tell us how bad it is out here. So I went on a tangent. But if we can get Zechariah 14 and 9 and Hebrews 8 and 5, just to finish up how the, that pattern that's in operation is talked about in the law, in the prophets. It's also over in Hebrews. It's talked about in Revelation, see, that there is the, a, those principles are lining up. We are on a migration. Our creator is threefold. He's operating according to a pattern as the priest was operating in a tabernacle. There is structure, there is function, there is salvation, there's the forgiveness of transgressions in the operation of the pattern, see, because those people that committed sin, they had to go to the high priest. He had to offer up a sacrifice so they their sins could be forgiven, see, and they can receive some what? Salvation until the next time they broke the law. And then they were yet back again. So we can get Zechariah 14 and 9 and then Hebrews 8 and 5. No, I don't mean Zechariah. I mean First Chronicles 28, 19 and then Hebrews 8 and 5. First Chronicles 28, 19. All, all this said David, Yahweh made me understand in writing by his hand upon me, even all the works of this pattern. Okay, so David, he's talking about the pattern. Yahweh gave me and Ken three things to build. You build Noah's Ark, lower story, middle story, upper story. Why? Pointing to the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. David, see, Solomon, see, uh, uh, Yahweh Elohim passed his hand over him and showed him to how to build the tabernacle. He gave it to his son Solomon, and he built that temple threefold, porch, sanctuary, oracle overlaid in gold, constructed as a man sitting on a throne. Same principle, what? The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. There was a court for the Gentiles, a court for the Jews. It was a Yahweh Elohim in his own purpose to save both what? Jew and Gentile, have a place in him. Now we're no longer Jew and Gentile. All that is done away in Yahshua the Messiah. We're only saved by grace through faith. He's not looking at the flesh. See, he ain't saving black folks. He ain't saving white folks. He ain't saving rich folks. He ain't saving poor folks. He ain't saving Republicans. He ain't saving Democrats. All that ain't nothing but a bunch of junk to keep us bound, looking at the flesh. We're saved by grace through faith, believing in Yahshua the Messiah. That's the only way we're getting in. Because he said, Every man, according to his eating, must make your count for the lamb. And that's a principle in operation that you do not leave Egypt without making your count for the lamb. See, that I can't get in on nobody's coattail. I can't get in on my family members who are in class coattail. Can't get in on my spouse coattail. I can't, if I don't have a lamb in me and the blood on the inside, oh, well, it's a problem. See, everybody got to make that count for the lamb. So let's get Hebrews 8 and 5. Hebrews 8 and 5. Who serve unto the example 
the and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of Elohim when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. Okay, so again, we're talking about the pattern. So we can get the tabernacle pattern um, chart just to get a bigger illustration to show how it's a most holy place, a holy place in court roundabout. And it's seven steps in a pattern. The first step is the gate. The second step is the brazen altar. That's where the high priest would slay the sacrifices. The children of Israel would come to him, admit their sins, bring a proper sacrifice. He would say that slay the sacrifice in their stead. So the animal or the sacrifice would die instead of them. See, he would wash the sacrifice, let the water out, wash himself. So you have principles of death, burial, and the high priest had to be anointed. So you have principles of death, burial, resurrection, because he would go through the first veil, which is the fourth step. That's the door. See, you had the brazen, uh, the altar was the second step. The third step was the brazen labor. The fourth step was the first step or the door. You go into the door, and that's the whole holy place is the fifth step. You had the seven branch golden candlestick, the golden table of shoe bread, the golden altar of incense. All these are overlaid in gold. All those in the court roundabout, highly polished brass. He had functions in the holy place. And then he would go into the most holy place once a year, piercing the sixth step or the second veil. Go in the most holy place, which is in the seven steps, see, once a year on the Day of Atonement, see. And then it was a three in one configuration there. It was the Ark of the Covenant joined at the mercy seat the, uh, with the Yahweh Elohim, the invisible presence of Yahweh Elohim 12. He said that in Leviticus 16 and 2. And inside the chest of the Ark, it was a hidden pot of mana, mana Aaron's rod that budded, and the Ten Commandment law. So within there, the high priest would go three times, one time a year, Day of Atonement. He would come out after he saw the flashing of the Shekinah to know that the children of Israel's sins had been forgiven for that year. So you have principles of death, burial, resurrection, ascension, blood, water, spirit, 40, 50, 60, and 70. Yahshua the Messiah, he was crucified, he was buried, he resurrected the third day, according to the scriptures, see, he tarried on the earth some 40 days, see, after that, he ascended, see, 10 days later, he poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit, he sat down at the right hand of the Father. Now, Yahshua the Messiah, see, when the children of Israel, when they went, left Egypt, we talked about how they leave Egypt by the Passover, they had the lamb. They went through the Red Sea. They followed the cloud. So you have those principles and pattern. We have that altar, the labor, the high priest being anointed. They went through the Red Sea. That's like to going through that veil, going into the holy place. We see they're operating according to the pattern. They had manna rain down from heaven. That's like into that bread principle. They had the cloud out there, the pillar fire by night and the cloud by day. See, that's like into that light principle. They had the altar of incense. See, Moses was a type of the intercessor. He was not the true intercessor. Yahshua the Messiah is our only mediator. Mediator says, for this cause, he's the mediator of the New Testament. So you have that light principle and the intercession and the bread principle happening in the wilderness as compared to the pattern. Then Moses dies off. And it was talked about not long ago in class how it's beautiful how Moses had to die off and only Joshua, the son of Nun, could take them over into Canaan's land, showing us, proving to us that it's only Joshua, the Messiah, that can take you on into heaven itself and put you in the kingdom, see? And so Joshua, see, they, the river Jordan parted, just like the Red Sea parted. It rose up in the heap. The high priest was carrying that ark on their shoulders. Foot went in, that it spread. And they went through on dry ground. So you have them entering, see, into most holy place, type of receiving the kingdom or Jerusalem above being, uh, Jerusalem beneath being likened to Jerusalem above. But it was only Yahshua. See, it was beautiful how they showed that, which reminds us, don't look at a man. See, Moses was the type. Joshua, see, he's the son of none. 
Joshua or Yahshua. He the only one that can take you over. So, um, and they went over. They mourned Moses' death some 30 days. Joshua gave him three days to prepare vigils. So you have a principle of 33 on that second veil, like Joshua and Messiah was 33 when he rent the veil of his flesh. And so, um, so the migration, uh, our migration, we're down here to try to leave Egypt. Our thoughts, our theories, our carnal ways, it has to go. There's an altar. See, um, that stuff has to be burned up. But we know it's only Yahshua and the Messiah that can do it. We can't do it ourselves. Remember, it's to you that um, there was talked about that they couldn't wash themselves. They had to be washed and anointed. And so it's the same down here now. Let's get it where Yahshua and Messiah. They completed the Passover meal and Yahshua girded himself with a towel and he's washing the disciples' feet. Because see, it takes the natural to understand the spiritual. Yahshua and Messiah, well, we'll get, let's get that Matthew 5, 17 first. So we don't want to neglect what Yahshua and the Messiah said. And then we'll get Luke 24, 27, and 44. Um, because Yahshua and the Messiah, he had a mission when he came. He came to fulfill those things that were instituted under the old covenant or under the law. That was never given to us as Gentiles. We come in, we as Gentiles come in by faith. Matter of fact, everybody come in, ain't no getting in without faith and believing in Yahshua the Messiah and having him as our head. All those works are done. It says in Colossians 2.14, he nailed it to the cross. Now we have a chance because before that, it was only the Hebrew people and the Hebrew people only. He revealed his laws, his ordinances too, but he brought that to an end and he nailed that thing to the cross. There was some 613 laws and ordinances, circumcision, ceremonies, or baptism, you know, and they couldn't keep it. Why? Because it was outside of them. It has to be in us. But once the Holy Spirit get in us, then we can be led and guided and move according to the spirit or what thus saith Yahweh. As long as it's outside of us, we are not going to be able to do those things that are pleasing to Yahweh. It has to be in us because they couldn't keep it and we can't keep it either. So let's get Matthew and then Luke and then we'll get how they had completed them eating the Passover. And then Yahshua took the towel, he girded himself and he was washing the disciples' feet. Did you say five and 17 for Matthew? Yeah, we'll get that first. And then Luke 24, 27 and 44. I'm probably kind of all over, but just have to go how Yahshua is leading me. Matthew five and 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So we learn down here, coming down here to one of these schools, fulfill and institute don't even mean the same thing. Institute means to start up, to establish. Fulfill means to complete, bring to an end, to usher into its reality. Yahshua is saying, don't think I'm coming to fulfill. When you see me get water baptized, that don't mean for you to do it. I'm fulfilling this thing. I'm bringing it to an end because you're going to be completing me, as it says in the scripture. When I kept the Passover, that's it. It's a done deal. It's brought to an end. Don't make it the everlasting Passover like they have. Uh, the ministers then deceive the people. They didn't hood with the people. They're passing out crackers and grape juice in disobedience of what thus saith Yahweh. First, we learned that wasn't even on the meal. It was roasted lamb, unleavened bread, and bitter herbs. But now they're doing crackers and grape juice. That's wrong. That Yahshua and the fulfill the Passover. He's causing folks, these ministers, you have to give a tenth of your earning. That's wrong. Not, you don't have to do any of those physical things. Um, even now with tax time, some, some groups are asking for their memberships uh, W-2s just to make sure. That's how the devil is. He wants to look at your income that you made for the year to be sure 
You're going to give him a tenth of a tenth of your earning. This is all a part of mystery Babylon, the deception, the deception of the satanic spirits operating in these ministers. See, to um, deceive the people. That's all that is. Just deception, not telling the people the truth, that you're saved by grace through faith and not of works. But let's get the other scripture there. You want Luke uh, 24, 25? Yes, 25, 27, and 44th verse. Okay. This is Luke uh, 24, 25, King James Version. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Messiah have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them in all the scriptures, things concerning himself. This is 44. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then open he you, their understanding. Okay, so it takes Yahshua to open up the understanding and takes Yahshua to open up our understanding that those things were being fulfilled, those things pointed to and testified to me. And they had a problem with him. They said he made himself equal with the creator. And they were always testing Yahshua and the Messiah, not knowing he was the creator, manifested in the flesh um, and trying to call him on the carpet. See, healing folks, if they had a problem with, I only have five minutes left. Thank you, I see the sign. So. Um, he said, look, I'm coming to fulfill, not set up. See, they had a world under heavy bondage. They got mankind under heavy bondage, see, and not knowing that there is nothing you need to do other than believe the true report of Joshua the Messiah, that you're saved by grace through faith and not of works. So let's get that other scripture there. I don't know what I might have called. Oh, they had the Passover meal. Yahshua and the Messiah, he uh, fulfilled that Passover that was instituted under the law. They, he told his disciples, go in the street, you find a man, and just tell him we're going to have the Passover at his house. Um, <laughs> only he can do that. Uh, yeah, I'm coming to your house to eat. Um, and they kept the Passover and see, they um, he girded himself. And I just want to get the part. I know they went out to a garden, they sung a song, all those are principles, the children of Israel left Egypt after having a Passover, and they sang a song of victory, but the one in which he girded himself with a towel, he was washing his disciples' feet, and then there's another scripture that says you're clean by the word, if we know what that is. So, because the principle of Yahshua the Messiah, he's washing or cleaning the feet, where well, the bottom of our feet is the soul. See, our soul has to be clean. And it talks about out of a man's belly will flow rivers of living water. And when he told his disciples to go out there and preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Yahweh, in the name of the Son, Elohim, in the name of the Holy Spirit, Yahshua the Messiah is preaching the gospel. That doesn't mean dunking them in physical water. Because we were talking about not long ago that baptism, people automatically think water. But it's an immersion. But that principle of washing the feet or washing the soul, it's like they're cleaning up the soul, see? Because to be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. When we don't have Yahshua, we're spiritually dead. We're carnal. And we have to be cleaned up. Cleaned up from what? Thoughts, theories, opinions, hate, malice, strife. All those works of the flesh has to go. And we have to be cleaned up. See, then the Holy Spirit can fill the house. See, we're tabernacles, we're houses. But without that, we are a tomb. And ain't nothing but a dead soul in there with a bunch of flesh sitting up in the house. So that's the principle. He's cleaning them up so they can go out what? And preach the gospel. But he said, look, you wait in Jerusalem till you receive power from on high. And then 
You're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now you can go out and be my witnesses. You ate the meal. I washed and cleaned you up. Then you can receive the Holy Spirit. Now you can go out and preach the gospel. And that's exactly what they did. So if we don't have that, maybe we can, um, like, you know, find it on our own. It is in the scripture where he washed the disciples' feet. Now it says, you are clean by the word. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's uh, John uh, 13 and 4. Um, he okay. rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with, his, with a towel wherewith he was girded. Then come of he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Rabbi, dost thou wash my feet? Yahshua answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Okay, okay. so I, thank you. I just wanted to get that part. He's cleaning them. It's a, a type of shadow being cleaned up and Yahshua washing the feet. You got to be cleaned up. You got to be anointed. You have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. See, that's what we're down here for, to learn of Yahshua, to be cleaned up, to have our hearts and minds converted and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So I just want to say this. Don't let... Let nothing get in your way of coming to learn about Yahshua the Messiah, whether it's just jumping on these Zoom classes. Let nothing and no one, not even yourself, come to class, sit down and try to, uh, you know, allow Yahshua to, to teach us um, because it's something out here. See, it's something out here. Anything to get in your way from keeping you from learning about Yahshua. That's what the devil has in mind for us. And we got to pray unto Yahshua. Keep me because I can't keep myself. And with these few words, I'll say hallelujah. All praise and honor, glory, go to Yahshua and Messiah. Okay, so our second speaker for this evening uh, is Dr. Casey Jones. Dr. Jones. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Um, that was unexpected. Uh, I... Uh, I uh, really enjoyed the uh, previous uh, comments, you know, from the previous speaker. And I also am uh, uh, grateful and, and thankful to uh, just share anything uh, that Yahweh Elohim has, has, has showed me through Yahshua the Messiah. Um, I... Uh, I'm just, uh, as I said, grateful and thankful to uh, to be in class still, and um, just to have anything to say uh, about Yahshua. And um, you know, as the previous speaker said, you know, he is the teacher, and uh, he is always continuing to teach and uh, I uh, I guess one of the things that I looked at today was uh, it, I don't know if someone can find it but it's uh, it's looking at the structure of a man his, his skeletal system and how the the bone structure of a man's physical body is a mute witness to a body within a body. Um, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing, uh, and it, the bones actually point to the super incorporeal form Elohim, that word of son that is only seen in divine visions and accompanied with a revelation and 
that's what the bones typify because the bones last uh, long after the flesh is decomposed. And it was also something that was revealed in uh, Genesis, uh, I want to say the 50th chapter, 22 through, if, if we can find Genesis 50, 22 uh, through the end of it, because Joseph, who was a forerunner, one of the one of the children of, of Abraham was a forerunner down in Egypt. And before he died, he wanted his bones to be taken up out of Egypt with the children of Israel. And this typified him, his soul leaving out of Egypt, because Egypt represents misery, darkness, chaos, confusion. So when he passed on, he wanted his children to, to bring his bones out of Egypt. And it's a, also a, another principle, also in um, Genesis uh, with, uh, with Adam and Eve. And, you know, Adam being a type of Yahshua the Messiah, who's made body, soul, and spirit. When Eve was formed, she was formed from the rib. Or, the, or from the womb and the rib. And when she was presented to Adam, he said, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Um, so I, I call, I, I don't know exactly where that one is. And it's another principle I want to say is in Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. And it, it's talking about um, how Elohim uh, carry Ezekiel out in the spirit and placed him in a valley of dry bones. And um, he told Ezekiel to prophesy on those dry bones. And those bones came together as uh, our flesh was over. Flesh was put on those bones. And, and this te te uh, testifies to uh, Yahweh Elohim when after he formed uh, Adam, he breathed the breath of life into Adam and Adam became a living soul. So those bones in that uh, dry valley where Ezekiel was at typified the body of children of Israel, those that, believe, that died and believed in the faith. And they were believing in the promise after Yahshua the Messiah's death, burial, and resurrection, that was fulfilled when he, re when he resurrected from the grave. And those bodies and those that came up after his resurrection, those were, that was that prophecy fulfilled, in which you can find that, I want to say, in Matthew 27 and 58. But I I uh, I know I called on a couple of things. Maybe we can grab those if if you found any of them. Thank you. Did you say Genesis twenty five? No, Genesis fifty and twenty two. This is Genesis fifty and twenty two. And Joseph when and Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's house. And Joseph lived an hundred and ten years. And Joseph saw Ephraim's children of the third generation, the children also of Mahir, the son of Manasseh, were brought up upon Joseph's knees. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die, and Elohim will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, verse 25. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, Elom will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones from hence. So Joseph died, being an hundred and ten years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt.
Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Um. And you know, it, it the the bones of a man typified the man's soul. See, man is is made body, soul, and spirit. Um. And also, when uh, the children of Israel were told to take out a lamb and they had to examine that lamb, it couldn't have any uh, spots or blemishes and it couldn't have a bone broken. So it had to be perfect. Um, I, wanna, I want to say though that uh, maybe I should have Maybe I, sh I should have that read, but if someone can find it, I believe it's in Exodus, the 12th chapter, that no bone could be broken because this this lamb was testifying to Yahshua, the Messiah, when he was crucified and he, he had, you know, he, the nails in his hands and nails in his feet and the crown of thorns on his head. The soldier came by and pierced him in the side. But his bones couldn't, his bones wasn't broken. So that's, that was a fulfillment. I don't know if anybody can, can, can find that. But um, maybe we can have Ezekiel, that 37th chapter, read because, uh, as I said, you know, Yahweh is, he's the teacher. And he prophesied, um, he was prophesying long before it's in Ezekiel that he would bring together both tribes. Uh, he would bring together Judah together and they would be, they would be one tribe. They would no longer be separated. And that was fulfilled and Joshua promised his, the, the land to Abraham and he would bless all families of the earth in his seed. And that seed, Isaac being the type of, that seed was Joshua the Messiah who, who blessed both Jew and Gentile. Um, and, and that prophecy, that was in, uh, if maybe we can find it in, Ezekiel, uh, the 37th chapter. Uh, I hope that's um, the one that I'm looking for because he speaks about putting two sticks together. And those two sticks represent those disconnected tribes. You know, the Jew, the Gentile, he, he gonna put them both together and they gonna be one in his hand. That's, and after Yahshua, the Messiah's death, burial, and resurrection, it was a body. The grave, graves were open and the bodies came up after his resurrection. So that's that's a fulfillment. And, and uh, I, did we anybody find any of those? Um, you want this to speak your third? Yeah, this is your 37-15. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. The word of Yahweh came again unto me from the King James Version, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of, stick of Ephraim, and for all, all the house of Israel his com companions, join them one to another into one stick and they shall become one in thy hand. And when the children of Israel, thy people shall speak unto thee saying, wilt thou not show us what thou meanest by these? Say unto them, thus saith Yahweh Elohim, behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, 
and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in mine hand. Thank you. I thank you for that. Um, and, you know, that prophecy was fulfilled after Yahshua the Messiah's death, burial, and resurrection. So can we have Matthew 27 and 52? This is Matthew 27 and 52. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I um, didn't really have a... Uh, uh, much on my heart and mind, you know, uh, I'm just uh, uh, grateful to Yahshua that um, he still has allowed me to still learn of him uh, because he's, he is the, the teacher and in control. And, you know, even when it, you know, even when it's rough patches and, you know, he's always there, you know, uh, he's never, he's never at, you know, uh, it's just, uh, I really just didn't really have a whole lot on my heart and mind. Uh, But hey, these are it's just troublesome times, you know. And you know, Yahshua, he's the he's the calm and the eye of the storm, you know. Um just following and listening to him. And can I have John 14 and 26 read? Um, because as the previous speaker said, you know, Yahweh is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And you ask, what is spirit? Well, spirit is matter materialized. It's the source of substance of all things. It's intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, beauty, love, justice, foundation, power, and strength. And these uh, attributes took on shape and form as Elohim, known as the word or son and showed himself to Moses and the prophets, showed himself to Moses as that threefold intangible tabernacle pattern, which was a description of himself. Uh, it, can we have Hebrews 8 and 5 read? Did we, it, if we didn't have that read. Hebrews 8 and 5, who served unto the example and shadow of heavenly things as Moses was admonished of Elohim when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. Okay, thank you for that. And, you know, part of also, something else that maybe I can find this page number for you. It's uh, page 55, and that would be in the third volume, Builder and Maker. I don't know if you all can find that, but it speaks how um, our physical bodies have members. And you know, sometimes you can get arthritis in your joints or something, which is like friction be between joints. And, you know, this is, this is 
something that the physical body goes through, you know, in, in, a, in a bony structure. But it points to the soul of a man. Like, well, what I want to say is the soul of a man also has members. And these members are these nine divine attributes of intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, beauty, love, justice, foundation, power, and strength. And, you know, it's, that's, it's, it, it, you know, it's a mouthful when, <laughs> when sometimes you learn these things, but they are very, uh, very vital and very uh, humbling. Uh, so, you know, it's by grace uh, we are saved. I don't know if we can find that. I believe that's, I don't know exactly where that is, but can we find that? And anything else I might have called. Now, oh yeah, I said Hebrews 8 and 5. Now, that was a description of him. Because if you look at the tabernacle pattern for a second, it's the most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. So the most holy place, that's like an unto Yahweh, which is without shape and form, pure spirit, inscrutable, can't know anything about him in that state and, state and form. But when he takes on shape and form as Elohim, as the word of son, that's like an unto the holy place in the tabernacle. Then he breaks himself further down as Yahshua the Messiah. That's like an unto that high priest in the outer court. So threefold, but one tabernacle. And it's uh, testifying to Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua the Messiah. See, these three are one. Uh, and it's, a, it's just a, a humbling thing. Um, and did I, I know, I, did I call for anything? You have John 14 and 26, sir. Thank you. This is John 14 and 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Continue. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. We have heard Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye would rejoice because I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you, before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in common with me. Thank, thank you for that. Um, and that's the thing, you know, uh, you know, it's Yahweh who gives this peace, you know. It's not, you, you won't find it in the world. You know, the world is in, in, in chaos and, you know, it's always uh, violence going on, somebody getting shot here and 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 you know people are arming themselves you know um but to be carnally minded is death maybe we can find that because uh that's it's only a uh 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 by grace that Yahshua the Messiah doesn't have me and all of us being carnally minded, you know, focusing on physical things, uh, you know, what, what you can get in this life and, you know, how much stuff you can buy up and, 
you know, how's how how the stock market is doing, that kind of stuff. And the truth of the matter is those things, they're they're temporary, they're nothing. You know, um I don't know if someone can find find this for me because I'm terrible with scriptures, but it speaks about not building up your riches on earth, you know, to build it in heaven where moths, they don't corrupt that, you know, but here on earth is corrupted, you know? So, uh, did I call for anything? I may be in uh, Ephesians. And also, I seen you all had it up. I apologize. Uh, you all had it up, the uh, volume. Can we have that again, that volume? It was page 55. Maybe we can have some of that read. Yes, thank you. Um, wherever you all, if anybody wants to read a little bit of it, I would appreciate it. Um, I can read it, Doc, this, the skeletal system and pattern. I'll take it from page 53 from the top. Thank you. The skeletal system and the pattern. I'm reading volume three, page 53. The bones which comprise the skeletal system are the most durable part of the human torso and the skeletal remains, uh, remains of humans and animals have been excavated long after the fleshly remains have deteriorated. Furthermore, when these bony remains are cor correct, correctly assembled, they form a bodily configuration that gives great evidence of the previous physical or fleshly shape and form of their owner. Thus, the whole skeletal system gives mute testimony of or is a manifestation of a body within a body. To be more specific, the skeletal framework is a physical manifestation of the incorporeal body or soul and its more lasting quality and durability is a witness of the soul that lives on and on. The Bible offers many references in testimony of what we have just said. If one understands the meaning of what one reads in the Bible, Joseph, who was one of the 12 sons of Jacob, instructed the children of Israel before he died to be sure to take his bones with them out of Egypt after his death, when they would be liberated from the bondage of Pharaoh, Genesis 50, 22 through 26. This simply implied that his soul, Joseph's, or his incorporeal body would live on and would be with them throughout their journey to Canaan land. And if one really understands that Joseph was a figure of Yahshua, the Messiah, one can see the scripture significance of Israel's carrying Joseph's bones with them. That's the end of that paragraph, Dr. Jones. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, as I said, I didn't, I really, I didn't have too much on my heart and mind. Uh, it's, it's a lot more, um, a lot more in that is uh, I'm just grateful, you know, for this knowledge, and you know, it's a, it's given by Yahweh Elohim through His Son Yahshua the Messiah, and I'm eternally grateful for it because um, it's stability and um, in a world that you know we are fleshly creatures, you know. You know, it you 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 find you, you just it's just to learn a Yahshua the Messiah, um, try to speak to him, you know, and within your your tent and and 
and that's another principle also when when Moses was um, down in the wilderness and it was always disputes or it was a problem here there's a problem there he just went into the tent and talked to Joshua son of Nun, who we learn is Yahshua and when the, when in his tent that's going into his closet he he's praying he's going to a quiet place and you speak to Yahshua there you know somewhere where you don't have no distraction and go in a quiet place and and, and go within because he resides within us and our heart and mind um and and that's uh Maybe I can have uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, and 20. First Corinthians 6, 19, and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which is in you, which ye have of Yahweh, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify Yahweh in your body and in your spirit, which are his. That's right. Thank you, sir. So, um, it's, a, it's, it's a, a wonderful thing learning about Yahweh. Because... I know I was listening to a transcript recently from Dr. Kenley and um, looking back, some of the things he was saying was, you know, really, you know, is he, Yahweh is not concerned with black or white because, you know, at the time, this, he, he was preaching, this was kind of back, this was 1940. 1950 civil rights movement going on and everything. But he said, Yahweh not concerned about black or white. So you can get that jump out of your head. You know, he's concerned with the soul. And that makes me think of um, the scripture that says that flesh and blood does not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. If someone can find that, I'd appreciate that one too. But it's foundation for me, you know, and it's 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 opposite of what that the satanic spirit is, you know. Who, who, in John eight eight forty four, I believe it says, you know, you know, you are a liar. It said the devil is a liar and the father of lies, you know, and he was a murderer from the start. So. And you see that principle with Adam and Eve in the garden, always saying, trying to do the opposite, always, you know, trying, trying to lie. And, and that's what they're having problems with in the world right now. Misinformation, they say we have mass misinformation everywhere with, with this COVID vaccine and everything like that. But that's the mystery of iniquity because, you know, the devil is a lie. And he the father of it. But it's mystery Babylon. And you know, Yahshua is is the only thing that that can protect you here. Maybe we can find it's an a a, a a scripture that speaks about putting on a whole arm of Yahweh. Can we add those two that I just caught? Um, can you repeat those scriptures, Doc? Yes, sir. John 44? I have uh, Ephesians if you want that. Yeah, that works. Thank you. Okay. Ephesians 6, and I'll start at uh, I'll start at 10. Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in Yahweh and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of Yahweh 
that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the adversary. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Continue. Let me read all of it. Yeah, it's great. Right. All right, I am at the well, 13th. How long you got to go? Is I'm, that at the up I'm at the 13th verse. Um, okay, I well, I, I, I really I apologize because I, I enjoy hearing it myself. You know, because it it is uh some you just gotta I try to wrap these things to heart, you know. Um you know, you had to put on a whole armor. You really do. Cause uh it's it's rough right now and it's gonna get rougher. So I appreciate it. Thank you for that. Um and did I call for anything else? Uh, you you can finish if 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 uh, it wasn't much to go. I mean, it's up to you. All right, I'll finish it. Um, Thirteen. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of Elohim, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all the stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of Yahweh. Thank you. Um, did I, I, and I believe that other scripture I call, as I said, I didn't have much on my heart and mind. I'm just grateful to uh, just to be in class and just be learning a Yahshua the Messiah because um, he, he's worthy of all the praise and I'm just grateful to him, you know, that he's allowed me to still continue to learn of him. Did I uh, call for anything else? Oh yeah, by grace are you saved, I believe. That's in if, yes, if we can have that read. This is Ephesians. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is a gift of Yahweh, not of works, lest any man should boast. That's right. Not of works, you know, no boasting, you know, because. He, man will be doing that all day long, trying to boast about something, you know. And it's by grace you say, not of works, you know. And that, that's a beautiful thing. You know, you don't have to work for it. Um, also, I, I see somebody put something in the chat. Thank you for that. Um, First Corinthians 15 and 50. This is 1 Corinthians 15 and 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption 
and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to Yahweh, which giveth us the victory through our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Keep going. No, thank you for that. Um, as I said, I didn't have that much, much uh, on my heart and mind. I'm just uh, grateful to be here and and uh, just to share anything that uh, Yahshua has shown me and uh, just to, but for folks, you know, it's always just to rely on Yahshua the Messiah, you know, he, he'll get you out of trouble, you know, and he's the comforter and he is the teacher and, um, you know, It's uh, it's just a, a beautiful, uh, beautiful thing, you know, uh, you know, and I also it's also in First Kings. Well, I was thinking of that the tabernacle that was in uh, Canaan's land. It was weather beaten. It was a weather beaten tabernacle, and the vessels that were in that weather beaten tabernacle had to be the gold golden vessels had to be moved over into Solomon's temple, which was typified like a man sitting on a throne, like the previous speaker was speaking about. And that that's showing how our souls had to be put in the body of Yahshua the Messiah. And and, you know, the body of Yahshua the Messiah is what is the body is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. It's not a physical place It's Jerusalem above and flesh and blood doesn't enter that. And um, it's only through Yahshua the Messiah, who's who's the only mediator, you know, between Yahweh and man. And, um, you know, I, uh, if anybody uh, got anything from what I said, all praise and honor goes to Yahweh Elohim through Yahshua Messiah, and I'm going to yield the floor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Jones. At this time, we'd like to open the floor up for personal testimonies or anybody want to share anything. Um, please feel free to share. I'd like to share. Um, there was a uh, scripture that uh, you had called Rose um, in um, Romans uh, 10, 17. And the way it was uh, read out the Holy Name Bible, it's so different in the uh, King James Version. If uh, somebody can read it for me, read it out of Holy Name, and then read it out of King James, I just want to... Uh, Point that out if uh, somebody can do that. I know we don't got a lot of time, but please and thank you. Which scripture is that, Doc? Romans 10 17, out of the Holy Name Bible. So then faith cometh, cometh by hearing the word of Yahweh. Okay, so in Holy Name it says, and faith cometh by hearing the word of Yahweh. Now, somebody that's got a King James Bible, can you read it out of the King James Bible, Romans 10, 17? Romans 10, 17, out of the King James Bible. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Okay, so you see the difference? It says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of Yahweh. So you can't have faith if you don't hear, but you can't hear without Yahweh. Isn't that pretty? 
faith cometh by hearing and hearing comes by the word of Yahweh. So it is Yahweh Elohim or Yahshua Messiah that allows us to hear this wonderful, great truth. It is just, um, it's just so wonderful to me that he shows us these things and we can hold on to him and know that he's in control of our salvation. And I am just happy and grateful and thankful to that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We still have a few minutes if anyone else would like to share. Anyone? Good evening, class. Um, I was just um, trying to do some studying and I was reading um, Proverbs. And if somebody really quickly can get Proverbs 3 um, and 9 through 15. I mean, I can read it myself. I'll just it's read it. Proverbs 3 and 9. Okay. Proverbs 3 and 9 until 15. Honor, well, let me read it out of the King James, uh, Holy Name. Proverbs 3 and 9, Holy Name Bible. Honor Yahweh with thy substance and with the first fruits of thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening of Yahweh, neither be weary of his correction. For whom Yahweh loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son, in whom he delighteth. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise is better than the merchandise of silver. I'm sorry, I read that again. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. So, you know, as I was reading that, for anybody that may be listening that still is under the belief that you're supposed to tithe 10% of your first income or increase. What Yahshua was showing me, and that is that he clearly states that um, um, it's better that uh, knowing, having wisdom and getting understanding is better uh, merchandise than that of silver and gold. So that 10% of your increase is uh, the, the wisdom and the, the knowledge that he gives you, the understanding of it, that is the increase that you should, that's your first fruits, not physical monetary money, but uh, when he shows you something of the gospel, those are the things that you should be sharing, you know, with your brethren or with anyone who is trying to, or has questions about uh, the gospel. And I just, you know, as I was studying, I found that very interesting because so many people think, you know, in the world are still tithing and thinking that it, it's a monetary value thing when it's not. And it, he clearly states it right there. And uh, I yield the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Daniels. We'd like to thank all the speakers that came forward and those that gave their testimony as well. We'd like to end class with just a few announcements. Please join us every Monday and Thursday from 9.30 p.m., 7.30 p.m., sorry, to 9.30 p.m. 
We are on Zoom as presented on YouTube. We also meet in person at the Hillside Best Western on Sundays from 12 to 2 p.m. The Hillside Best Western is located at 4400 Frontage Road in Hillside, Illinois. Please come out and study with us. Uh, we also like to thank our visitors, Dr. Amir and Mariah Coleman and Dr. B. Gordon and um, Brother Clifford Cardoza from Malaysia. At this time, we'll end with doxology. Doxology is taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. Yeah.